So in the summer of 1861, the Confederates have a real problem. You've got a lot of sick men coming into camps here around Richmond. And when I say sick, I want to emphasize that. Most of the patients here at Chimborazo are sick, not wounded. So think about things like uh, typhoid fever or dysentery. This is what's bringing men into the hospitals. Now, the Confederates did not want to establish a hospital or prison bureaucracy. In fact, that's the last thing they wanted. They wanted to treat you in private homes in downtown Richmond. But all of a sudden, they're swarmed with all these sick men. What do you do? What do you actually do with this problem? And the answer, of course, was to create what was eventually up here. Chimborazo Hospital was the outgrowth of this sudden realization that we need to have a prison and a hospital bureaucracy, and we need to make this a system, and we need to take this seriously because it's not going to be a short war. And so over 100 buildings were created right here in what's now Chimborazo Park. And for three years of the war, this served as one of the South's largest hospitals. Over 70,000 men were treated here and about 5,000 men died. That is a remarkable mortality rate of close to 6%. But when the end of the war came, it is not the end of the story here at Chimborazo. One of the most fascinating things is in addition to having this amazing Civil War story, it has this wonderful post-war history as well. It became a freedmen's camp after the war, almost immediately. And for longer than it was used as a Confederate hospital, this was the first home of many former slaves. And this is what happened until the city bought this land right here and turned it into a park. So it drives right up to now. And that's what makes this place such a fascinating story in Richmond's wonderful plan of history. It's not just that one time, it goes on.